My name is Chris Bennett. This is a sculpture of Lee Gobble. Lee Gobble was a clothier and a friend of Fairfield and an enthusiastic promoter of Fairfield for many, many years. He had a clothier shop on, on the uh, west edge of the square in Fairfield. Last year, he died at 101. A few months ago, after Lee had passed away, I was contacted by first Ron Blair, then, then I talked to the, to the mayor, and then I talked to Susan Kessel about the opportunity to do a sculpture of Lee Gobble. I was, I was really glad to do that because I knew Lee and I enjoyed him. I didn't know all the facets of his life, but once we got to talking, there were, there were many things that we, we learned that he was quite a prankster and just a overall um, kind of a, what do you say, theatrical type person, I suppose, on an on amateur way. Um, so we not only decided to do a sculpture of just Lee, but we thought of things that we could add to it that would tell his story. Well, one of the things that was mentioned was he helped to put the steeple back on the tower of the courthouse. One, one day, a few years ago, he, when that tower was put up, he was standing outside the Civic Center and he put his hand up like this and Susan Kessel was standing there. She's part of the Art Association. And, and that stance kind of rung, it, it, it was etched in her mind a little bit. So when she thought of a sculpture of Lee, she thought of him presenting that tower. We decided to hire models. We asked for people that were from 60, late 60s to in 70s to, to come and, and interview as a model. We chose, I think, five out of five. <laughs> we decided everyone who was just right would use them. One man came who was particularly well suited physically and, and age group was, was a man from West Des Moines or Urbandale, somewhere in that area. So it had been a long drive. He had relatives here he could stay with. But so he came once and we did, he came once or twice and we took photographs of him that I could work from. Then there were several other people that, that were modeled. There ended up being three people actually. So I, I had them stand on a turntable. You'll see the turntable back behind me that has the mannequin on it. And they would stand in, in um, little briefs, kind of a swimming brief, and, and stand there. And, and they were his body type, his height, and his, his age group. I could get an idea of how they would stand or, or, or slump or whatever they would do. And I, I built up clay over an aluminum armature that's held up by this brace inside. Aluminum armature, I bent it each, each, each angle of each joint two or three different ways and, and measured it proportionally the, to, to make it so it, it looked like a, a real figure in there. And then I built up the little egg shapes over, over the, um, each area, whether it's the calf, the thigh, the hips, the, the shoulders, the arms, the head. Then I started to finish that and I used anatomy books Then I used photographs of the models and, and I finished it anatomically first because I want to make sure that the, the figure, the real life figure pushes out the cloth and you know that there's a real body in there. So, and, and so all the drapery is, is hanging from the high points of the, of the different forms of the figure. What I did after the models were dis dismissed, I took some of Lee's actual clothing, his pants, a sweater, a, a, um, a jacket. I even have his glasses somewhere uh, and his bow tie. And I, and I dressed the mannequin. The, I rang the, the, the ringer in his pocket because that makes the pocket bulge out. And I put that right into the, into the clothing. I had to know how, how the, the cloth would hang and, and the folds would, 
would uh, come away from the high points. We've incorporated four artists. I'm the, the head designer, I suppose you'd say. And there are two, three other people that be working on the project. Once it gets to be life size, I will take the foam head, I'll have it enlarged separately. I'll take the foam head. I might not even use that piece, but might use a wig head. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it to Alabama where a young man, Ken Rowe, he used to live here in Fairfield. In fact, he was a student of mine. He apprenticed with me for a very short time. He'll take that head and he'll make Lee's image. I'll, I'll, prob I'll, have, the, I'll have photographs, I'll have the, the life-size foam of, of what, uh, what I want, and I'll give him directions, and I'll let him do the, the piece because that's what they wanted. They wanted to incorporate other, other artists in the project. The design for the tile feathers, Mark Schaefer will do that. He's been a longtime friend of mine and he's a very valuable artist uh, here in Fairfield and done a lot of work for, for Fairfield. He'll make that, he'll make, when you approach the, the sculpture, what you'll see is that fan of ties and he'll do a colorful detailing. It'll be all imagery, but you won't know that at first. Because you'll see the lines, patterns, just like turkey feathers. You'll see it just the way, with the tones, the yellows, the darks, the, the, the browns. It'll look like a spray of turkey, but as you come around, you'll actually see the images. So he's going to craftily do that. And as I mentioned before, uh, Harry Alto with Alto Design will be taking his drawing and transferring it to, uh, to making it work for tile. And, and laying it out so it'll work for, the, for the, tile, the actual tile. One of the most important people of this project, that, that would be Werner Elmker. He is, is doing the videoing and the, uh, constantly of this, of this project. So you, you made the glasses, where are the glasses? The glasses are right here. These are Lee's actual glasses okay, so, that I borrowed from the museum. So we borrowed these from the museum. That would be the Carnegie Historical Museum. <laughs> and I got permission to loan them. We don't normally do that. But anyway, um, I think because in a sculpture you only make part of the, the frame in order to suggest reflection, right? Uh, yeah, it suggests, it, it suggests reflection of out here where there's no frame. See, I can, back, I can backfill everything else. I can't right. backfill that. Right. So in order to, to suggest part of the frame, that's where it, I'll say it highlights on the glasses yeah. or the, out at the edge. So because, because it was not a complete frame, somehow the glasses didn't look as round as I remembered. So I'm glad that you've, you've rectified that. That looks good. And I also um, cut, the, I, I cut the outer edges and cut some off the bridge and put mm -hmm. things together more. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I'll go in there with yeah. real yep. fine stuff. That's good, yeah. I think we did it. Okay, good. Good job, well done. I think we're done. <laughs> so we're in the center section at the Fairfield Arts and Convention Center, and we're getting ready to decide. We've already decided, but confirm our decision of where we're putting the Lee Gobble sculpture. So we've moved over, we're more in front of the theater now, and this is the actual place where we had a flatbed truck and Lee Gobble stood when we had the dedication and they lowered the steeple. Oh, I didn't realize. Oh, that's neat. Isn't that perfect? So this is where yeah. he was when they put the steeple on yes, the courthouse. Yes, he stood on here and he did his presentation. So we're looking at final uh, details. You have finished. Yes. You're waiting for the Art Association to say, okay, this yes. is it, ship it yes. to the foundry. Yes. Create it. Yes. Because you're driving it there. Yes. And yeah. where is there? There is in, uh, somewhere in Golden, Colorado. The foundry. N near, yeah. So all the details and referencing photographs of different ages of Lee from earliest ages of I don't know, maybe 40, 50 years old, clear up to... Well, we used, um, let's see if we can find one 50 years old, but I had some primary ones. 
But the, the, the variety of ages present some problems mm -hmm. in that a person ages through exactly. these years and changes. Because we both had people come up to us and say, well, that's not the way I remember Lee Gobble. Well, no, because you didn't know him in the 60s. You only knew him from he's probably he probably 80 or 50, 95. 50s yeah, that. look at that. Oh, my goodness. That, he has a double chin. Right. It's way too thick. Yeah, his face was very full. And that's, that's probably, and he's oh, close to 60. Mm -hmm. And he definitely has some uh, more... Still jowls and stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. My, the primary uh, one that I used was this one. It's not a straight on shot, but it gave me close enough. And, and then I just evened out everything. I, I had two, two sides anyway. And then I used the profile. Let's see. This bone structure doesn't change that much. The chin might jut out a little bit, but I, I got the exact of his nose. And that age is approximately 90 or so? Yeah, at least. Oh, I think that's 90 to 100. Okay. <laughs> this, this piece will, should, I hope it's done in, in June. This small piece. This will be cast in bronze. Right. This small bronze will be cast in bronze and then on display here is the idea. Oh, cool. Yeah. So having this sculpture in front of the Fairfield Arts and Convention Center is a major opportunity for tourism for our community in southeastern Iowa. We have busloads come to this facility. We are ranked second for entertainment venues in the state of Iowa after the Des Moines Civic Center. We have people coming from all over. I wish I had the numbers right with me, but I don't. But they come from out of state, all the counties. And that's so wonderful because back when Parsons College did their summer festivals, it was the same thing. And I figured, well, now there's Hancher and the Des Moines Civic Center and all that to, to shut us out. And it's nice to have those, those hmm. days revisited. That's, that's yes. really wonderful. So all the school buses they bring from all the area schools, from Pekin area, Cardinal, MSAE, they all come here and see events and they walk through and see the gallery, they see the sculpture. Um, we'll have brochures, they'll get a pick up about, about Lee Gobble and about the history that he relates to, about the steeple across the street that he's placed, he raised the money for to uh, put it back on after it was blown off in the 40s. 48, I think. 48. Um, Lee was a major part of this community and important to the state, I think. He had some relationships in Des Moines, um, you name it, <laughs> he was there. So it's a good placement. And also with the Parsons um, College Hall of Fame just down the hall here and all the visitors that we get to that and the stained glass window from the Bar Height Chapel, it all just pulls together. So thank you, Chris, for working with the Art Association again. And I officially give my blessing. <laughs> For this to be created and taken to the foundry. Sounds good. All right, good. Thank Safe you. Safe travel. You can see here the courthouse with its steeple, which came off and was blown off in the 1940s. Mm -hmm. And Lee was responsible for doing the fundraising, coming up with the idea of placing that steeple back on the courthouse. And he had promised his dad that he would get the steeple back on the courthouse someday. So he kept his promises. Yep. That's cool. And, and in they, this... And excuse me, and these are enlargements of postcards from... Lee's extensive collection of historic images from, from the community. There are a lot of items in this Carnegie Museum area that were donated from <clears throat> Lee Gobble, and we'll go through and list a few of them and why he's relative to Fairfield and all the connections. That's about five, five to seven years before Lee passed, uh, Museum Board Ch President Gene Ludke and I were invited over to Lee's house and he gave us the full tour and we made a list of all the things that he wanted to come to the museum. So everything from Lee jean belt buckles <laughs> and Cupid dolls with little Lee uh, uh, coveralls on to pictures from World War II that he had taken with his camera, um, including the Hart Schaffner and Marx welcomes you to Paris sign that somehow he got hung above this boulevard before the troops marched in and got in big trouble for. Lee had a way of getting himself involved in so many things, Coco Chanel. And, oh, he, he had lunch with Coco Chanel. Scott, Scott Jordan told me that 
that Lee invited him to come along to have lunch with Coco Chanel, the dress designer. And I guess she took a big puff on her cigarette and turned to her assistant <laughs> and asked why she was having lunch with Z's GIs. And <laughs> so, Lee perked up and said, well, excuse me, but, or he might have said, pardon de moi, I don't know. Anyway, he said, you're part of the reason, or I'm part of the reason you're still in business. He had this little thing going with, with perfume. He was selling perfumes to, to the officers and, and the enlisted men. And we have some French perfume that belonged to his mother. And I'm thinking probably that's part of the, part of his little business venture. So Lee was everywhere doing everything and uh, we have to recognize him. Yeah. Here we can see Lee Gobble's old golf clubs. I remember decorating his home for the house tour at Christmas time and we had ribbons and bows tied all over these and mm -hmm. hung on his walls. Mm -hmm. And behind you can see the first golf and country club was very important to Lee. And he was always a member and drove the kids around on his golf cart. And of course he had his, his uh, La Turkey license plate. License plate. Oh, that's a store employee. Yeah, oh my goodness. That's 1965. And that's why when people say, like the, the image on the statue, like people that didn't know him in 65 don't realize how round his face was when he was young. And like you were saying over at the Civic Center, one of the challenges for Chris to capture a likeness was what era do you focus on? He had a lot of photographs to base the sculpture on mm -hmm. and going through all those years. and he was never a heavy changing. man, but he had a, a fleshy round face. And then in later years, his face became thinner. He, uh, we tried to capture the spirit and fun person in the sculpture that was Lee Gobble. All of his little, he was very eccentric, uh, the things he did, and we wanted to capture them. And I'm sure we'll even capture more in the booklet that we're going to mm -hmm. create and maybe have a treasure hunt. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna have the schools come to this museum and learn about Lee Gobble and why he's in a sculpture in front of the Arts and Convention Center, mm -hmm. learn about the history of Fairfield and parts of Iowa, whether it's art or the industries of Fairfield, the mm -hmm. first golf and country club, um, the hospital that was built in Fairfield. And he put clothes on the back of everybody. Farmers would go to the basement to buy the their bib overalls, and the man about town at Parsons College would get his fancy duds there. So he, he clothed a lot of bodies. So we'll be keeping Lee Gobble alive in Fairfield with this sculpture. Yes. Thank you.